We got my Sirop. Damn, we got all this and y'all want Diddy to come to my room. He ain't even brought no Sirop. I don't want that old ass around me. He old ass Ain't no more team. What the is Puffy doing? I'm gonna have a drink to forget about this Back in the days when he was like 10 and I was a little bit older, his older brother, we used to fight over the over the Frosted Flakes, you know what I'm saying, before pause was invented. Once again, the esteemed rapper and film producer, 50 Cent, has taken to social media to voice his concerns, this time directing his attention towards his fellow hip-hop mogul, Sean Diddy Combs, and Atlanta artist Lil Baby. The incident unfolded at the annual party held at the Hamptons' home of Fanatic CEO Michael Rubin and Camille Fischel on July 3rd, in celebration of Independence Day. On Instagram, 50 Cent shared a photograph capturing Lil Baby in the embrace of two men. In his caption, he expressed his discomfort with the situation, remarking, See, this is why I don't go to any parties with Puffy and them. He further questioned the scene, instructing the men to get off and concluded with a perplexed shout, it's worth noting that this is not the first instance of 50 Cent publicly raising questions about Diddy's sexuality, as he has previously used various photos of Diddy with other men to insinuate that the hip-hop mogul might be gay. In 2018, Diddy addressed these comments, stating that he harbors no ill feelings towards 50 Cent and actually believes that the rapper has genuine affection for him, saying, I don't have nobody. While some fans found 50 Cent's criticisms amusing, others expressed concern about his continuous focus on Diddy's personal life. The photo from the white party evidently struck a nerve with 50 Cent, leading him to share his concerns with his followers. Over time, 50 Cent has carved a niche for himself as a social media bully, causing many celebrities to fear crossing his path. His latest trolling incident has garnered significant attention from fellow celebrities, including the likes of Boozy Badass, who came forward to defend Lil Baby. Boozy holds the belief that the shot in question doesn't carry the implications that others are suggesting. According to him, it was simply a bad picture, and he asserts that he doesn't view Lil Baby in any negative way. During an Instagram Live session, when someone commented about the situation, Boozy responded strongly, stating, I don't care what picture he took. Y'all can get off my life with that little baby, I'm letting y'all know, yeah, that's my man. That man likes women straight. He further added a warning, say something about Lil Baby again and I'm trying to get back on tour with Lil Baby so get your thing out of my life. It's important to note that Boozy has previously made comments about queer people that have raised concerns about his stance on the LGBTQ community. His views on this matter remain uncertain due to the range of things he has said in the past. Despite facing accusations of homophobia, Boozy recently made a controversial statement during an appearance on Math Hoffa's My Expert Opinion podcast, expressing that he trusts gay people with his money more than regular people. Last month, the Baton Rouge native discussed how he fearlessly uses his platform to speak about matters he believes are right or wrong, regardless of what others may think. Boozy emphasized that although some of his statements may be misinterpreted or twisted, he stands firm on the principles he expresses. He acknowledged that when one speaks the truth, people often attempt to portray them as crazy. Boozy asserted that every word he utters holds deep conviction, and he unwaveringly stands by his views. Unfortunately, the world has taken some of his words out of context and falsely claimed that he harbors animosity towards certain groups, which he denies. Boozy pointed out that the truth is not the same for everyone, and he cited an example of his assistant manager being gay, with whom he maintains a positive and respectful relationship. He emphasized that he does not hold any ill will towards individuals based on their sexual orientation. Boozy acknowledged that his assistant manager handles money and business matters effectively, and his sexuality has never been an issue. In 2021, Lil Nas X's father was among those who allegedly misunderstood and took offense to Boozy Badass's comments, considering them as homophobic. Lil Nas X's father criticized the rapper for promoting drugs, gun violence, and objectifying women in his music, while also expressing concern about Boozy's remarks regarding his son. He questioned the contradiction of Boozy's behavior as a gangster rapper, claiming to be for the kids, while using derogatory language and engaging in inappropriate content. On Instagram at the time, he posted, The game has passed you. We're real bankhead over here, not like the guy who claims it. Ruben and Fischl extended invitations to numerous stars for the gathering at their Long Island estate. A star-studded lineup attended the function, including Jay-Z, Beyonce, Usher, Justin Bieber, Kim Kardashian, Leonardo DiCaprio, Tom Brady, Jennifer Lopez, Ben Affleck, Travis Scott, Kevin Hart, Kevin Durant, and many others. 
Interestingly, 50 Cent chose to single out Diddy, despite the fact that Diddy apparently wasn't even present at the party. As mentioned earlier, the rapper has a long-standing history of publicly questioning Diddy's sexuality. In 2014, he used separate photos of Diddy with Rick Ross and Steve Stout to insinuate that the entrepreneur from Harlem might be gay. Three years later, he circulated a photo of Diddy with openly gay filmmaker Lee Daniels, once again suggesting that Diddy's relationships with men might imply a sexual attraction. In 2018, Diddy finally addressed 50 Cent's constant gay jokes, stating, I don't have any beef with Fifth. He loves me. Y'all can't see that he loves me. You really think that's hate? During an interview with Power 105.1, during his appearance on the Breakfast Club radio show, Diddy emphasized that 50 Cent loves him. He broke it down, acknowledging that both of them have been in the industry for a long time, and the love between them is apparent. The hitmaker behind I Need a Girl also expressed his respect for 50 Cent's hard work. He made it clear that when he thinks about another man, it's in the context of uplifting everyone, and negative comments from others cannot truly affect him. However, there has been speculation surrounding 50 Cent sexuality. His ex-girlfriend Vivica Fox hinted at the possibility that the creator of the Get Rich or Die Trying album might be bisexual. This insinuation came when she made a comment about him on an XXL magazine cover alongside Soulja Boy, referring to him as looking like a booty snatcher. Despite the speculation and controversy, many fans found 50 Cent's criticisms amusing, with some even jokingly suggesting that he might start more trouble for sure. Following the successful event, Ruben expressed his gratitude to the guests who attended his 4th of July bash. He thanked everyone and hoped they were doing better than he was that day. He conveyed his appreciation for bringing together such an incredible group of people each year. Notable guests at the white party included Kim Kardashian, French Montana, Kevin Hart, Quavo, and more, making it a star-studded affair. Travis Scott also made an appearance at the party, arriving in a brand new white Utopia tour bus. After the event, social media was flooded with photos of various celebrities seemingly having a great time. It's possible that 50 Cent might just be experiencing some fear of missing out. On Twitter, fans had mixed reactions to 50 Cent's post. One fan pointed out that 50 Cent shouldn't be talking about Lil Baby being hugged up with anyone when Ghost from the TV show Power has been seen with his boy toys. Another fan found 50 Cent's caption on the Lil Baby picture extremely amusing, expressing that it had them in real tears. While another fan playfully highlighted that 50 Cent seemed to be the only rapper questioning what was going on in the Lil Baby photo. Now, let's take a closer look at Michael Rubin, the man who hosted this year's Party of the Year. While his name may not be as well known to the average person as some of his guests, Michael Rubin is a reported billionaire and an influential figure in the sports industry. He serves as the CEO of Fanatics, a prominent sports merchandise company. Ruben is known for having an extensive and diverse social circle, which is evident from the high-profile guest list at his celebrated event. According to his profile, Michael Rubin actively visits various retail stores under his ownership, such as Lid Stores, PSG Stores, and the NBA Store. He spends quality time with Victor, and they even attend each other's games. The entrepreneur's journey began during his teenage years when he ran a ski equipment business in Philadelphia. In his 20s, he made the bold decision to drop out of school and launch Global Sports Incorporated, an apparel and logistics company. Later on, he sold this company, which became known as GSI Commerce, to eBay in 2011 for a staggering $2.4 billion. In the process, he retained control of Fanatics, which is the production segment of the business. Fanatics is renowned for providing officially licensed sports merchandise, along with other services such as digital asset collection and betting. As per the company's website, Forbes estimates Michael Rubin's net worth to be around $11.4 billion, making it abundantly clear that he has the means to host a truly extravagant party. The billionaire has earned a reputation for organizing star-studded gatherings, as demonstrated by his 2020 Super Bowl party, which saw the attendance of illustrious guests like Jay-Z, Alex Rodriguez, Emily Ratajkowski, Post Malone, and Shaquille O'Neal. In an interview with the New York Times in 2021, Rubin expressed his fondness for bringing people together. He emphasized his diverse set of friends and his belief in the power of mutual learning and growth among them. Rubin described himself as a sponge, always eager to absorb knowledge from his friends, and he attributed his vast social circle as one of his greatest assets. He believes that having a diverse group of friends allows for constant learning from one another, as he highlighted the examples of learning from Robert Kraft, Meek Mill, Quavo, and Gary Vee, among others. 
Rather than engaging in trolling behaviors, perhaps 50 Cent should consider joining this seemingly amazing social circle, which could provide him with valuable opportunities for personal and intellectual growth. So that's all from today's video. If you enjoyed it, remember to leave a like, subscribe, and ring that bell icon so you never miss our upcoming videos. And don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments section. Stay tuned, and we will catch you in the next video.